The Vision High School Sports Feed is brought to you by the 11 locally owned Vision Automotive Group dealerships, offering Nissan, Kia, Buick, GMC, Hyundai, Jeep, Dodge, Chrysler, Ram, and the Resale Division, with locations in the greater Rochester area near you. Visit visionauto.com. Hello everyone and thank you for joining us on the Vision High School Sports Beat. I'm Dave Yates. We begin our look at Section 5 Sports in Churchville this week, where the Saints have a new turf field and a community that came out to support the Orange and Black. Here's Paul Gotham. Fall sports practices began in early August, little less than a month's anticipation of the season's first contest. At Churchville Chilai, it was a home opener they had been looking forward to for more than a year as the Saints open their brand new turf field complex. It's really exciting and I'm excited for teams to look back in the future and like see all of, know all the um, big accomplishments we've had on this field and just be excited to play on it. What's it like knowing that you're going to be the first set of Churchville Child Eye Saints to play a game on there? Oh my god, it's so exciting. I'm so excited for everyone to look back. We signed a ball saying that we're the first game and kids are going to look back and be like, oh, that's so exciting. I'm literally thrilled. And it's beautiful, it's huge, it's brand new, so we're just thrilled. There were plenty of sacrifices over the past year. How long has this taken to get us to this point? Well, it was planned for one year and we ended right on time actually. So entire last school year we had to relocate our soccer teams, football team, track and field, lacrosse. We had to be creative for a year, but uh, we pulled it off. It was a decision though that made as much practical sense as anything. You know, the, the turf field helps us be more competitive with other teams, uh, so it's a, it's a great thing to have. It's, it's great for, not only for the teams that will be sharing this field with us, but it's for the whole community. It's something to be very proud of, so we're, we're very thrilled to have it. And now, you know, weather-wise, it's not going to impact us as much as with the natural grass. Uh, turf has just become something that's it's year-round. Our, our kids are training on it all the time. When you look at how sectionals is playing out with semifinals and finals, you really need to be someone who is good at play on turf and our game unlike soccer or sorry unlike football and lacrosse our game the ball is on the ground 95 percent of the time so it makes a difference in our game so the world's changed turf is the way of the future i think uh, both gates and brockport are, are putting it in now as well it's, i don't think there's going to be schools that don't have it anymore so we were excited as coaches honestly there have been some adjustments and what's it been like to practice what was that first day of practice like for you it was a little different because we've always been playing on grass, but it helps us out with the speed of play and a bunch of other skills on the ball. Um, it was definitely different, but I think we were all just like mesmerized because as you can see, it's a beautiful field and we're all just really excited about it. We are so happy to be able to share this with our church coach highlight athletes for practices and athletic contests. The board takes its fiscal responsibility very seriously. John Mahoney was on the board that recommended the school district make the switch to turf. Uh, I think it'll help us uh, make us more successful because again, you have to be good at this surface. I think it's something like 90 plus percent of teams in the last 10 years who won sectionals were turf teams. Very rarely do you see teams, it, it happens, Athena went to states and they're a grass team, but it's rare. The bigger schools tend to play better when, uh, on turf because they train on it and those are the teams that are winning. So we, we needed it. We were, we're really excited to have it. Our community is awesome. They support our budget. Every time we put things forward, we give them the reasons why, and uh, it didn't seem to be too hard of a sell. They know that it's needed. Well, it means that we're going to play all the time and that, you know, we're not going to have things canceled or delayed or whatever the case is because of, you know, the field condition. And, uh, and again, I feel that it prepares us for going into sectionals as most of the sectional play happens on turf fields. Churchville hosted rival Spencerport for its opening doubleheader. Uh, and even as a school employee, it's a great thing because our lacrosse teams in the spring and our baseball teams, no, no one can get outside because the surfaces are just so much uh, tougher to get on in, in the spring. So for the whole school, it's just a great thing. And, and look at it. It's beautiful. It's just an awesome facility. We're so excited to have it. What's it like to finally get to this night and have opening night and have these teams on here? It's awesome and it's a relief because, uh, again, being creative has uh, caused us to play different places, different locations. The kids have been great. The coaches have been great about being adaptive, but 
to have this open now and ready for use all year round is going to be awesome. From Churchville, this is Paul Gotham with the Vision High School Sports Beat. The Saints boys soccer team scored eight straight goals for a come from behind win in their home opener against Spencerport. Well, coming up, Paul rejoins us for the Dunkin' Donuts High School Notebook. We've got that and more when the Vision High School Sports Beat returns. I love you. I can't stop thinking about you. This feels so real. Zappy for maple? Then you'll love Duncan's Belgian waffle sandwich and our other maple and pumpkin-y flavors. I can't wait to see you. Excuse me. I'm getting yelled at. Time now for the High School Notebook brought to you by Dunkin' Donuts. America runs on Dunkin' and joined as always by Paul Gotham from PickAndSplinters.com. Paul, interesting kind of combination today that you might not expect between a football team and a soccer team. Explain that. Yes. Wilson High School, Hilton High School, football, soccer. There is the connection, father and son connection, and there's no coincidence that the son is as hard of a worker as he is. And tell us a little bit about it. What's, what's the deal? So... Hilton gets off and wins their first three games of the year. Their closest game was against Webster Schrader. Uh, down to the 15 minutes to go, it's a tie game. Mike Ellicott pushes all the right buttons, but he sends in his backup goalie to score a goal. <laughs> his backup goalie to score a goal. And sure enough, uh, Andrew Cavuto comes in for his coach and, and delivers. Uh, it, Mike described it later as, a, as an alley-oop play <laughs> because Justin Arrelotta headed the ball off the, off the crossbar and Andrew was there with, the, with his own header uh, to win the game. Here's the thing, Ellicott after the game couldn't say enough about Andrew, again, as a backup goalie who works harder than anybody in practice. Sometimes he's, he's in a line when they're warming up, he's taking, making saves and then he's turning right around and he's getting a line taking shots. Well, there's no coincidence because when we talk about how good Wilson's football team is, the defensive coordinator is Ron Cavuto, the father of oh, Andrew wow. Cavuto. So that's, there's always that, uh, that saying about uh, great coaches, have great kids, and uh, there's there's no coincidence that the hardest worker on Hilton High School soccer team is the son of a defensive coordinator. Paul, it's always nice to see a kid who works hard as a backup, and it pays off for him in the end. Now, talking Wilson football, this time scoring as opposed to the defensive angle. Well, the defense also had a part of it. How about this? Wilson's football team scored three touchdowns in less than nine minutes and only ran one play from, from scrimmage. Uh, first play of scrimmage, Desi Floyd goes 75 yards. Uh, around the end for a touchdown. Uh, they stopped Brighton on downs. Ricky Gamble, who that earlier that day announced his commitment to the University of Albany to play football next year. Ricky Gamble takes the punt and goes 70 yards for a touchdown. Next set of downs, Brighton fumbles. Niger King Jr. <laughs> picks it up and runs it into the end zone. They've got a 20 nothing game and, and it, was, it was no looking back at that point in time. Wow, to talk about <laughs> lightning in a bottle, right? That's fantastic. Good for them. Now, talking signings there, how about some other signings, talking uh, some baseball? Well, and continued Section 5 uh, success with our kids moving on uh, to college. We have four kids now in the last month, the highlighted, highlighted by uh, sophomore Gage Zeal, who is com committed now to the Miami Hurricanes, which is after him playing for the national team and all the success he had there, uh, now he's, he's paving his way to, uh, to his college education, which is great to see from the young man. Uh, Santino Rosso from Victor committed to Hofstra. And those are on the heels of Ben Beauchamp committing to uh, McQuaid's Ben Beauchamp committing to go to the University of Albany, as well as Ryan O'Mara also from McQuaid, who will now be playing at Niagara, following in the footsteps of Greg Cullen, Jeez. who went from McQuaid to Niagara and was drafted this past year. So a lot of success for Section 5 baseball. Always great to hear. Always great to hear and read about it on pickandsplinters.com. Paul, thanks for joining us. As always, we'll be back with more of the Vision High School Sports Beat right after this. Coming up next, the Making the Grade nominee with Kim. And later on, there's a new kind of football coming to Section 5 this year. 
We've got that story when the Vision High School Sports Beat continues. Welcome back to the Vision High School Sports Beat. I'm Kim Burnson. Honored for making the grade this week is Victor High School junior Katie Sedare. In just her first season with the varsity softball team, Katie Sedare impressed everyone with how much work she put in in the offseason. As a sophomore, Katie helped lead the Blue Devils to their second consecutive Section 5 title, and then they were crowned state champs shortly after that, the first time in program history. The then sophomore pitcher was named Class AA Player of the Year and MVP of the tournament after pitching four no hitters. There seems to be no offseason for Katie as she trains with pitching coaches year round. She's also a member of the UNY Revolution Softball Club to compete as much as possible. Her drive to succeed also extends to the classroom where it's clear she puts in the work there as well. Katie maintains a 94 average and has plans to study biomedical engineering in the future. Nominated for her determination to continuously improve and for being a role model to her peers, this week Katie Sedare is making the grade. If you have a student in mind for our Making the Grade segment, we want your nominations. You can send them in to info at classywolf.com. And now here's Dave with the McArdles Section 5 Spotlight. Well, thanks, Kim. Here are some of the athletes, teams, and coaches making news in this week's Section 5 Spotlight brought to you by McArdles in Fairport. Come home to McArdles. Rush Henrietta grad Sam Smythe scored three goals for Nazareth in helping the Golden Flyers to a 3-1 win over Deuville. Those are the first collegiate goals for the former Royal Comet. Mark Passero of McQuaid had a huge night in a 42-37 come from behind win over Canisius. The 5'6 Passero totaled 274 yards of offense, including 156 on the ground and three TDs to lead MCQ. Fairport Red Raiders boys volleyball accomplished one of its goals for the season, winning the prestigious Eden Can-Am Tournament in West Seneca. The 43rd annual tournament saw 24 teams compete, including three state champs. It's a big win for Fairport, looking to get back to states this season. And finally, 2012 Gates Chilai grad Kevin Gear has followed up a successful college career at Penn State with an opportunity to play professional volleyball in the Czech Republic. Good luck to Kevin with his new team, Aero Odalina Voda. And now a look at the Varsity Media Top Football Plays of the Week. And we will start off at number five. Luke Lupicella is going to go 50 yards for Webster Schrader. One of his two touchdowns on the evening. And Webster takes a 34-26 win over Spencerport. We go on to number four now. Freddie June for West Aronicoi. The Eagles quarterback looking up top to Quinn Simonson. He out jumps the Athena defender. Aronicoi is 2-0 after handling the Trojans 42-7 on Saturday afternoon. At number three, Arcadia freshman quarterback Brian Shonetsky with just 10 seconds to go, scores the touchdown. The Titans take care of Penfield 14-7. Arcadia is now 2-0. In at number two, Eastridge's Gunnar Lattimore up top, and Tony Arnold with the ups pulls it in for the touchdown against Brockport. The Lancers win it 25 to 14. They are now one and one. And our top play of the week, Hilton Jr. wide receiver Tajay Hill with not just one, but two big touchdown receptions for the Cadets as they knock off Pittsburgh. The Cadets Tajay Hill win the top performance of the week. Up next, the Holly Hawks are preparing for something new, a season of eight-man football. We'll talk about that and more when the Vision High School Sports Beat returns. And now to Eichel. He floated one. Welcome back, and thanks once again for joining us on the Vision High School Sports Beat. I'm Dave Yates. This segment of the Vision High School Sports Beat is brought to you by the Injury Free Coalition and our friends at Leo's Bakery and Deli. 
Please remember to always wear your seatbelt in the front and back seats, and to focus only on driving when behind the wheel of a car. This message courtesy of the Injury Free Coalition for Kids Smart Teen Driving Program and our friends at Leo's Bakery and Deli. With a decline in numbers of participating athletes, some schools in New York State are opting for another way to play football, rather than eliminating the sport altogether. Eight-man football returned to the state last year after a 30-year absence, and now Section 5 is joining the list. And for Holly and its football future, that's a good thing. Come on, gentlemen, let's go. During the course of a football game, a coach will be forced to make adjustments. Maybe it's because of injuries. Maybe it's because of the weather. Maybe it's because the opponent is doing something unexpected. But what do you do when the game itself changes? When the sport you've spent your whole life watching and playing is suddenly very different? You adjust. That's what Will Prince, the head coach at Holly, had to do. He saw the numbers. He saw the writing on the wall. Fielding a football team would be nearly impossible for the Hawks. So they became the first team in Section 5 to make the change from traditional football to eight man. Well, the difference is you're taking six bodies off the field. There's a lot of more space out there. Um, you know, we're trying to communicate with the kids that you, it's, it's a better skilled game because you have to be a better tackler, a better blocker. Um, just the, the amount of space. We're not shutting the field down at all. We're playing on a normal field. So, you know, we're just trying to communicate with that open space. That can present plenty of headaches when it comes to making up a game plan. But what can be a reason to worry for some people means a great opportunity for others. Um, for me in the backfield, you're looking at it and there's three linemen instead of five and you're like, whoa, that's a big <laughs> difference, definitely. But I mean, it's just, it's all about getting used to it as a team, that's for sure. Offensively, I like it. <laughs> um, you know, I'm just basically telling my players, take the angle, get me four yards with all that open space. And um, but as a defensive point, my defensive coordinator, he has, he's having nightmares. <laughs> he, um, you know, it's it's a, it's a hard game. It's going to be hard for the kids to, um, you know, you give up that big play and, and don't let down because there's going to be about five more or more. I mean, there's going to be a high scoring game, uh, a lot of speed. A lot of open field and we got to make tackles and that's what we're trying to stress. Craig, you got to come to balance. You make a mistake, you're going to get a warning. You're going to say, hey, that's a mistake. That's not good. And we're going to put somebody else in, okay? This is the time people start separating. We're hitting other jerseys Saturday, okay? All, right, All that open space means a lot more opportunity to score. Yards, okay? Big plays are more of a rule than the exception in eight man. And that's something that will take some getting used to. You know, we have some playmakers too. And, you know, we just want to get the ball in, into their hands. If it happens against us, it, 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 like you say, turn around, it's going to happen, you know, just against them. And this is a whole new program for us. So those things are going to have to get used to. We're going to have to learn and we're going to have to build on that. Um, big plays are just going to be a part of the game. What are the biggest differences you see from a player's perspective trying to get used to the, the switch being made? Probably on the defensive side, because you can't let anything get on the outside of you. If you let play on the outside or run on the outside, get outside of you, it's gone. <laughs> Some people have a hard time embracing change, even when it seems like a change for the better. Not everyone has jumped on board, but Prince thinks this is something you will see more and more of in the future. Oh, we get it. Good job, good job, Hunter. Going in early, being the first team in Section 5 to say, yeah, this is where we're at it, um, we got a head start on it, and we did a great job. We had a, a parent night. Um, we had the superintendent come, the, you know, our athletic director. We, we talked with the parents, and we did a lot of uh, background and showed some film clips and had college coaches um, you know, send us letters that I could read saying it wasn't going to affect uh, scouting or anything like that because it's still football. Um, selling it to the community is tough, and there's, yes, there's the naysayers out there still, um, but we're, we're here to make them believers. Um, eight man is, I think it's here to stay for the small schools. It was hard to get into eight man football at the beginning, but now as we're progressing along, getting through practices, we're going. When you first heard about the change, what, what was your reaction? In my head, I didn't really like it. I didn't like it at all. But now as we're coming together as a family, it's, it's getting better. Bottom line is this, eight man football is here to stay because for schools like Holly, it's their only option. What's the alternative? You know, it's either you play eight men or you don't play. Um, you know, and, and you look out of here at these kids right here, 
you know, what would they be doing? You know, they'd be sitting home doing something, and, you know, and that always leads to something that's no good, and we don't want that. Two, three, hard work! The Hawks will play an abbreviated schedule with their first official game happening this weekend. Well, we'd like to thank our sponsors, especially the 11 dealerships of the Vision Automotive Group for making the Vision High School Sports Beat possible. We'll see you again next week.